Wait a second, Lewis. Are you sure about this? Gilbert, yes. Come on. Hi, girls. Are you guys looking to join a sorority? A sorority? <laughs> no. Hi. We really need some help. We figured pretty girls like you might be able to suggest a fraternity. Well, you know, boys, choosing the right fraternal organization can be one of the most important decisions in a man's life. For sure. Guys like you have to weigh your choices very carefully. Definitely. Well, tell us what frat do you think is us? You guys are alpha betas all the way. Totally, for sure. Wait, wait. aren't alpha betas like all jocks and face men? Yes, but you guys have got that certain something I know they'd be interested in. I'm going to call them and tell them you're coming. Should we ask for a particular alpha beta? Stan Gable. And you're? Betty Childs. Thank you, Betty and Miss Childs. Maybe if you're not busy sometime, we could have a cup of coffee or something. <laughs> Oh. Come on, pal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Joe. Also known as Jay-Z Productions on YouTube. Jay-Z Productions on YouTube. Welcome back to another episode of the Boys Podcast. Today I am joined by the wonderfully talented Julia Montgomery. Welcome. Hey! <laughs> Hi. Welcome. Hi, everybody. I got a couple questions for you, Miss Montgomery. Oh, no? shoot. Okay. So what are you doing during these times of quarantine, you know, with this whole thing? <laughs> well, right now... I have a I have a, a wonderful boyfriend who has a boat, so I'm actually uh, on a boat just in the just at the dock. But so this is like a great little respite to just be what? outside and see the water, and um, because it's been so hard. I mean, this has been going on for so long. Yeah. I mean, I think we all go through like dips and turns where it's like, okay, I got this, and then it's sort of like. My God, just let me out. <laughs> let me, let me, let me just be. I just want to see people without masks. I just want to be in a group just to, I don't know, see everyone's faces and hang out. You know, not like, not like Party Central, like back in the nerd day, but <laughs> yeah, just to get to see people for once. Like it's like weird, you know, like not like yeah. saying, oh, yeah. And, I mean, we kind of just seeing each other's eyes but in the beginning it almost felt like when we were all wearing masks in the beginning it was almost like you felt like we were just in some bad um, or or good you know video game or like it was just like i don't know it was just so weird so in yeah. some ways i've sort of gotten used to it in other ways i'm just ready to break out you know <laughs> like just yeah, me out. yeah. and so. uh, what made you want to become an actress and who was your biggest inspiration for acting i would say um for sure, Julie Andrews. When I was a kid, uh, my parents, my whole family, we we went to, in the movie. We went to see The Sound of Music. I'm sure we went to see it when it was in the movie theater. But I, re what I really remember, is um, back in those days um, when movies would come on, like the Disney, the Wonderful World of Disney, which then was just on, which then was on Sunday nights. And so on Sunday nights, you knew that in my family and probably in a bunch of others that you were going to sit down and watch some movie on whatever channel the wonderful world of Disney was on. And they would have, so each, it was like a big event. So anyway, I loved the sound of music. And when, when I was a kid, I was always in the school place and stuff in grade school. And then from there on, but when I was 11, there was, um, there was something called teen theater in our town in Livingston, New Jersey. And, they were going to do the play, The Sound of Music. So um, I, I'm i the youngest of my my siblings. My, my, old, my sister is four years older than me and my brother's seven. But my sister was in teen theater and she was a teen. But, you know, because they did The Sound of Music, they needed some younger kids. So anyway, I uh, somehow my sister saw me... Um, I think I was singing in the mirror at like, you know, 11, practicing The Sound of Music songs that I... Mm -hmm. my audition for and she's like are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna try out for the play and I'm like yes <laughs> <laughs> sibling rivalry but and and so she said well if you're not if you are I'm not and so I'm like okay because she had a lot of good she was a tomboy she was good at every sport but oh. but this was this was my sport <laughs> acting was 
that's right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I did audition and then um and then but I auditioned a week late, probably because I was guilted out by by her um saying that to me. But they had cast the the role and the director said, Oh, you would have been a perfect Brigida, which is like the eight year old in the and I'm like, and he's like, well, would you be willing to um, understudy? And I'm like, sure. And then, this is a horrible thing to say. Then, like, weeks, a couple weeks into the rehearsal, the girl who was cast as Brigida um, got mono. Oh. <laughs> so I got, to, I got to go in. I got to take over her role. I feel very badly. But not at the moment. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the beginning for sure. I mean... And then it just went on from there, uh, you know, as a as a junior high schooler, I did a lot of plays. And then in then when I just was about to turn 15, I started doing some modeling as a teenager. And then my modeling agency started throw, put me out, putting me uh, up for commercials. And I, that was really fun. And then they said, hey, my agent said, hey, we have this audition for soap opera. And I'm like, okay. And um, it was a lot of words to, to learn. Um, but I ended up going in in the morning. And then in the afternoon, they called me back. And uh, I got the part on One Life to Live, which was a long running role, which finally, I that was in New York City. That was really a blast. So when I finally left that show, I moved out to California, and that's when I, I started booking things. And within the first year, I think, is when uh, first Up the Creek happened as far as movies, and then Revenge of the Nerds. And um, Revenge of the Nerds is such a blast. Like, really. Such, I, so, so much fun. Iconic film. I like I like that movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, because it's got, it's like funny, and it's, you know, many things, but but it's but it's got a lot of heart. Yeah. Like people people will come up and say, you know, you changed my life, um, meaning, you know, that there was hope for them because because the movie was like about, you know, people accepting, you know, what well, we all know it was about. But, you know, like people accepting people, not just on looks alone. So believe it or not, you mentioned like Julie Andrews, I actually had an actor that's worked with Julie Andrews on a movie. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. That what? Uh, in the old days, or I know she narrates the show Bridgerton, which is on um, Netflix right now. But I, I, and I once met her, and I told her, "I'm like, you're my, you're my inspiration." <laughs> she was, she was just lovely. She was great. It was an actor from. Have you seen the Princess Diaries? I'm sure you have. A, yes. Yeah, an actor from there. He was the. I forgot what character he was. He, Joel McCreary. He was like the one, like not like a the one that danced with her. The host. <laughs> one of the guys okay. that danced. Wow. That's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. He's like talking about his stories of her. It was really awesome, you know? Oh, wow. I would have loved that. I worked with Angela Lansbury, another woman of that time, wonderful actress. I did Murder, She Wrote. Um, and uh, she was tremendous. So, I mean, it's really fun to work with like women that. like that or men like that. But Wow. Yeah. Okay. Now, do you have a favorite role they've done? Favorite role? That's funny. Well, Nerds was definitely my favorite cast. I love that cast, and I love that director. Because yeah. Jeff gave us a lot of freedom. We rehearsed a lot, especially the Nerds rehearsed a lot. Um, I didn't really get that much that much in rehearsal, but it was just a great set to be on because there was a lot of freedom. Um, I did a part in a... In a a short movie that no I no one has seen called um, Great Harry and Jane, which is about Henry VIII, and I was one of his wives. I love that project because it was a period piece, and uh, Alan Garfield, who is who is no longer with us, but is a wonderful actor, and I got to work with him. So um, that was one of my favorites. But as far as the cast and the experience, Revenge of the Nerds was definitely one of the one of the best. Exactly. Believe it or not, still to be posted. I interviewed Jeff Canoe. So <laughs> you did? Yeah, he was so I, cool. I, I, <laughs> he's so uh, he's so cool, right? Is that what yeah. you said? Oh, he is. I'll have to. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to find that one on, on your on your YouTube. Yeah, yeah, he is a doll. He's and he's just a great guy. A very special director. Unusual. 
Because I'm going to do like a episode, like I'm going to do you and Mr. Canoe like back to back episodes, and then the episode 69 is going to be more Andrew and Diane. So it leads into like a big. Diane? Franklin. Oh, Diane. Fra- okay, Franklin. Okay, okay. First, I thought you meant Diane. And I, no, I was thinking that's Michelle. I was like, if you found Michelle Mayrink, nobody can. <laughs> if I got her, well, that'd be cool. Yeah, on the podcast. Great. But I don't think she does any, like, a, a, you know, a handful of us do Comic Cons and stuff, certainly not this year. But. Mich- Michelle really left the business like a long time ago. I know she's at school in Canada when I was doing research, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, so that's neat. I really loved her. I loved her. So I kind of, you know, it's kind of been sad that I haven't, I haven't seen her since since those days, since those days so long ago. Well, so if, if I get her, I'll call you up. I'll say, Miss Montgomery, do you want to say hi? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I got you. That'd be fun. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you could pick any, like, was there, like, a certain role you wanted to do, like, a Western time travel? Like, is there a certain role you want to do? Oh, that's so funny. I always wanted to be in a Western, and I still do. I still want to be in a Western. There's still, there's, there must be one out there coming towards me. Um, just because I love anything that's a period piece. Mm-hmm. And also, I don't know, I just love those, um, those dresses and... Uh, I love horses, and I always thought, why isn't there a Western coming to me? <laughs> I really would like to do that. I like anything that's a period piece because it gives you a whole different, like, entrance into the character in, in some ways. Um, so, so yeah, I love to do period pieces. So, uh, book Julia Montgomery for a period piece now? <laughs> right now. That's yeah. right. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Do you over the years of your career? Do you still keep in touch with directors, co-stars? Do you still keep in touch? Oh, definitely. All of the um, all of the nerds cast. Um, uh, I even bu- I have bumped into Anthony Edwards. Funny enough, um, we used to go to the same cleaners. I'd be like Tony. <laughs> so, uh, but definitely with the Comic Cons, Robert, Chris, um, Tim Busfield, Donnie Gibbs, Larry, Brian. For sure, that group nice. and Jeff. I don't know if I said Jeff, but Jeff definitely. Um, Andrew, what's that? Andrew. Oh, <laughs> Andrew. Yes, for sure. Andrew's a child. We always sit together at our. We always have dinners and, at, you know, at the end of these different events, we have like the best time. It's, it's really fun. Yes, yeah, that cast I have the most contact with. I've run into Tom Selleck. You know, I did. His show, um, the Magnum show, he he's just super great, uh, super nice. But I've not like hung out with him like socially, like mm-hmm. I have with the Nerds cast. I wish you guys could come here, like to like a convention here in Chicago. Oh. That'd be cool. I wish. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. I was like, I miss Montgomery. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. It, yeah, that'd be cool. You know. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Who, it would. Okay. So, uh, who is the coolest person you worked with? You think of your whole career? Do you have like a coolest person you've worked with? John Goodman's pretty cool. <laughs> He's hysterical, and we yeah. just now, you know, totally platonically on that same on course nerds. Um, my my still best friend Bryn Thayer. She has done a lot of things, but she and I were on One Life to Live together. She's the coolest person because she's my best friend. <laughs> I've known her since I was eighteen. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. Back in New York City days. So totally fun. I like that. Okay. Now, is it what director taught you the most? And is there a director you want to work with down the line eventually? Oh, um, oh gosh. There's, gosh. I think Quentin Tarantino. I would love to see what yeah. kind of direction he would give me on anything because he's got such a great imagination whatever he does whether you love the movie or just so intrigued by the movie he goes just all the way with whatever his concept is and i just love that i think is there a director that taught you the most that like helped Hmm. i'm not thinking of one not because no one was helpful just because there isn't always a lot of time on the set for that. What I loved about Jeff mm-hmm. 
which he was amazing, was he was just so, he was so free. He'd be like, Julie, try this. Or just, or he'd be like, that was perfect. Now, um, like he called me back. He called me, they'd release me from the set uh, on Nerds, you know, to go home to the hotel. And, hmm. it, but they were still doing some scenes. And then I get a phone, you know, the, the phone rings in the room. And uh, it's the, it's the AD saying, hey, Jeff wants to know if you'll come back to the set to do this thing he just thought of. I'm like, sure. <laughs> Yeah, totally. And so that's how the little the little uh, snippet of the scene when I'm walking down the hall on my way to the shower and I'm singing uh, the E-I-E-I-O, you know, da, 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 da. and it's just like a tiny little moment. Then the other moment that I love that, no, actually that wasn't the moment. Well, I don't know. That could have been the moment. There was another moment when he's like, might've been the same night. He's like, Julie, just run out on the balcony, just run out there. And um, and then he didn't tell me what was going to happen. And then Bobby Lewis, the Lewis character, goes, yells out, we love you when you're mad. And, and it, so it's just spontaneous. <laughs> we love you when you're mad. <laughs> I love when directors do something that you just have no idea what's coming. That's so much fun. <laughs> that movie is like so many. Again, uh, I'm gonna back, go back to Jeff Canoe and Nerds because because it was just so fun. Yeah, that movie's got like so many good lines. Like it's so like quotable and so good. You know, yeah. I love that. Movie. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. I also like the line when you say like the end. Like I think when you were like in the football fit, like you're like I can't believe I'm in love with a nerd or something. <laughs> yes, exactly. God, I'm in love with a nerd. No, and. You know, I mean, I, I just love, I love, I love that movie. I mean, I love that movie because I think it's true. I think every, each one of us feels, even, even someone like Betty Childs, you know, had cheerleader, or whatever. Even Stan. I mean, if you know, in the third movie, uh, which it's not the, the favorite movie, but you know, it's, it was a movie of the week, the Revenge of the Nerds three. It comes out that Stan is actually a nerd. I mean, all of us are, are nerds. We all have things that we're not like. For one thing, uh, I'm talking about the negative, the, the negative connotation of nerds, meaning the things that people don't want, don't accept, don't, don't yeah. think are accept, ac aren't accepting of. Um, I'm not talking about, um, for sure, yes, there's, there's looks and that's a whole thing, but it's just more of the integral parts that, that each of us think inside ourselves, oh, I don't want anyone to know that I feel this way because that... I shouldn't, and I, you know, but just the the acceptance of people with all the humanity that we are, and that that looks are are great, but they aren't like what makes your heart tick. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Okay, no. now if you never did like movies, TV shows, like if you never were an actress, what would your career be, and what hobbies do you have? Well, when I was in seventh grade, I guess our teacher must have said, "Well, what do you want to do when you grow up?" And I remember writing. I either want to be a nurse because I want to help people or I want to be an actress. So I guess acting came, <laughs> opportunities for acting came <laughs> way sooner than anyone asked me to be a nurse. <laughs> although yeah. I was very, although I was always very helpful and, and like to, I like to nurture people. You know, I like to take care of people. That's just an innate characteristic, but uh, yeah, the acting, I just, um, a lot of opportunities came for, came or I just, not that they came. I, I just, I guess, you know, like as a kid, I just wanted them. So I went after them. And then, yes, I did have some opportunities that came. And I also worked hard and, you know, had things that I wanted that I didn't get. But but um, I guess I was, it, I went after it and it, I, it responded to me. And so, yeah, that's how, yeah. that's how it lit up. You seem like you would be like a nurse. I don't know. You just got like a nice attitude. Very nice. Help, help. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully sooner rather than later, like, you know, when things get back to normal, do you have any yeah. projects in the works? Uh, I don't have any particular projects right now, but um, there are things bubbling out there. It just, I think everybody's waiting to, you know, to finally get to be free. Although um, they are starting to shoot things. You know, I, I, I was shooting a, uh, a commercial last week when you called and um you know of course we did our COVID test in the morning and it was one of those 15 minute turnaround things and then 
and everyone's wearing their mask and all that, but it was so much fun to be on the set again. Um, and I look forward to more and more and more because it's hopefully going to turn out to be a really good year, I hope, for all of us. Nice. What okay. advice? What's your acting advice? You would give people who want to be an actor or actress. What's your advice? I would just get right into any project that was was near and near and around me. Anything, anything you can do, any opportunity to try out your, you know, your try your instincts and just go for it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you're working with. You shouldn't like. It's just like yes. Always say yes. Yes, 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 to any project. And you'll learn something and you'll meet more people and you'll like feel more about, you know, yourself and your, do I really love this? And what do I, or, what, or do I love writing? Or do I love, you know, it, follow your, follow your instincts and let it, let it move you to different places. Because um, I think that's what all of us need to do. And um, it's, probably the most fun thing about acting or anything i just like when i see my kids growing up you know i'm like yeah just try that if you don't think you think oh you just learn oh i like this about it but i don't like that fine you go down that road you know so yeah i yeah, got it. every opportunity and say yes to it i think because sometimes you know sometimes and i've done this sometimes you're like oh no i i don't think so because i'm, I'm afraid of this or it doesn't i'm not comfortable but I think what we all have to do, including myself, is always continue to go, okay, I know you're not comfortable. This is me talking to myself. I know you're not comfortable, but there's, why are you saying no? <laughs> you know, um, anyway, um, I do believe that. I like that. Okay. Is there anything you like to promote and shout out? I can link down below to help you out. <laughs> Say that again? What? Oh, is there anything below you like to promote and shout out? I can link down below in the description. Oh, oh, uh. No, not that I can think of right now, but what I'd like to do is um, just stay in touch, stay in touch yeah. with you. And I will, I'll, I'll give you a shout out to on anything and what's coming and, and uh, you do the same. Thank you. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. All so oh, sorry. You're saying. No, okay. Oh, I was like, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you. And Miss Montgomery for being an awesome and amazing guest. Thank oh, thank you, Joe. It was, it was really fun. You're really good at this. Thank you. Thank Have a good you for, for your uh, endurance. Thank you. And uh, for your genuine personality. It's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, I thank you. Uh, have a great day, everybody, and stay awesome. And stay awesome. Smoke Montgomery, stay awesome. Thank you. You too. Stay awesome.